everyone, uh, my name is Savannah with the education team here at Clearwater Marine Aquarium. We'd like to invite you today to spend some time with one of our uh, dive team members. This is Kaylin. She is an assistant dive safety officer and she's going to be teaching us about what she does here at CMA and what she does on a day-to-day -day basis as part of her job. So Kaylin, thank you for joining me. Now, the first question I have for you is just what does your day look like um, as part of your job? What do you do maybe from start to finish? Um, and if you can tell us any cool things you like about your job daily. Of course. Uh, so we come in and we actually maintain all the habitats that we have here. Most of our animals do involve being underwater. So we need divers to go in and clean those pools and habitats. Um, so we'll hit each pool or habitat at least two or three times a week just to stay on top of cleaning and making sure that everything is structurally sound on there. We also assist the animal care teams with different husbandry procedures and we assist with feeding the smaller fish too. And then specifically for me as an assistant dive safety officer, I do help uh, coordinate the interns and also manage our new volunteers that come in, get them trained up and ready to go to help support our operations here. Very cool. Thank you. Um, so what did you do or what was your path into getting into this field? Did you have to go to school or um, maybe did you volunteer here or intern here? Is there any other additional certifications that you had to get to achieve your position? So I went to school in Clemson, South Carolina for animal and veterinary science, and that gave me a really good background. And that's actually how I was able to start interning here when I was in college. But for specifically my position, I had to go and I became a scuba instructor, which gave me the credentials I needed to uh, join this position here. Um, but as far as interning, I did go to college for animal science. And that's kind of where I was pursuing to go. And then I fell in love with diving, so I decided to stick with that instead. Very cool. So were you a dive intern here at Clearwater Marine Aquarium or did you volunteer or did you do both? I was an intern. So I interned in the summer of 2017 and then I went back and finished school and then came back down to Florida to do my rescue internship over here at uh, Clearwater Marine Aquarium's rescue team. And then I got hired on with dive from there. And then I progressed through the ranks. I became a team lead and the intern coordinator for the dive team also. Very cool. So how long have you been at CMA altogether? Uh, about three years I've been here at CMA. Very cool. So in school, um, would you say that schooling is a requirement for this type of work or is there anything while students are in school that they can do to kind of help them get into this field? Uh, the degree definitely helps. Uh, definitely science gets you into this field. Um, science in biology, chemistry, even engineering can really help out trying to get into the diving industry. Um, I don't specifically require my degree for my job, but it really did help getting me here. Very cool. And does the internship program here require a college degree? Um, it requires that you be in college to apply for the position. So I'll have applicants that are fresh out of their first year or even those that have just recently graduated that are still looking to gain experience. And that'll definitely help you in this field is getting as much experience as possible. Very cool. Thank you. Uh, so my next question will kind of shift over on to what you do here. Um, on a day-to-day -day basis, is there any one thing in particular that is your favorite or do you have a favorite memory here? Um, what's just like your favorite part of your job? I really enjoy diving and especially with our Meet the Divers presentation, we go in and we educate uh, guests about what we do here and then just scuba in general. And I really do like inspiring all guests of all ages to come to the windows and interact with the divers through the glass. Um, we also help feed the fish and that's really entertaining to see the kids get really excited when we bring fish over to the window to feed. Um, and then also we did go out and we sank the houseboat to make the artificial reef out there. And one of my favorite memories is going out there to do the first dive after it had been sunk down to see what had been growing and coming to the area. Very cool. So kind of tailoring off of that, you obviously dive here in the habitats at the aquarium, but how much diving does your team get to do outside of these walls? So we clean the boats in the canal, um, but seriously though, we do go out and we try to uh, check up on the houseboat out there to see what is um, coming into the area, but most of our diving is here actually. We do try to get out there and do some research dives, but most of it is here. Very cool. So it sounds like there's a lot of opportunity, um, obviously not just here maintaining the habitats, but outside of these walls, which is very unique to certain dive programs, I think. Um, also, we are, of course, a guest-facing facility. How much time do you think you spend in your job actually uh, communicating with guests or interacting with them and how important do you think that is for somebody trying to get into this field? 
we spend a lot of our day um, engaging guests. Even when we're not at the presentations, we're in a very open area back here, and we have um, kids coming back here all the time just interested in learning about scuba. And one of my favorite facts to tell them is you can be certified as young as 10 years old, and that gets a lot of people really excited about joining this industry and coming into the diving community also. Um, but most of our day does involve engaging guests, and I would say be comfortable with it and make it a passion of yours to educate and inspire people to come in and learn as much as they can while they're here. Very nice. And my last question is, do you have any tips or encouraging information for people looking to get into this field? I would say get as much experience as possible as soon as you can, whether it's interning, volunteering, anywhere where you're local. I'm from South Carolina, so my options were limited there, but take advantage of every opportunity that you have to get into the field. All right. Thank you, Kaylin, for sharing all that with us. So now I'm going to switch it over to Kaylin, and she's going to show us some of the equipment that the dive team uses on a day-to-day -day basis. Thanks. So I did set up a scuba kit over here. This is our basic gear setup for when we go in to clean the different habitats and do our presentations underwater and support animal care in any way that we would have to be scuba diving. Uh, so here on the back, I do have my tank, which has compressed air inside. I can turn it for you. Um, and we do have a compressor here on site to where we can fill all of our tanks every day, and that's right over here. Um, but it is just compressed air, so one of my favorite questions to ask kids is, what do you think is in here? And they all guess oxygen, which is pretty close because there's oxygen, but there's also nitrogen and then other gases that are in our atmosphere as well. So it's not just a 100% oxygen tank. And then connected to my tank, I have my regulator, which keyword regulates that compressed air down to an ambient breathing pressure. And then it is attached to my BCD or my buoyancy control device. And this is how I can um, control where I am in the water column, whether I'm more positively buoyant at the surface or neutrally buoyant at the bottom. And I can actually control that right over here. So this smaller button will add air from the tank to help my BCD inflate. And then this larger button actually dumps that air back out and I could even sink farther down in the water column. A little less dramatic. Um, but I do have two regulators that I could breathe off of. This is my primary regulator right here. And that's what's mostly gonna be in my mouth. You see my lovely mouthpiece right there. Uh, but we do have an alternate regulator over here on the side in case my buddy were to um, get in any kind of danger, I could easily uh, switch to my alternate and give them my primary. Um, one of the most common issues here is when a buddy runs out of air, you would switch over your regulators so you could both breathe off the same tank and come to the surface safely. Um, and then we do have weights in our pockets because the entire point of diving is to be under the water. So all of this gear and your wetsuit makes you pretty positively buoyant. So we do dive with weights in our pockets here. And then OSHA does require that we dive with a completely separate air source that is um, a reserve gas supply. And so this is just a teeny tiny little scuba tank that I could hand off to my buddy or I could use should I run out of air. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right. So thank you, Kaylin, so much for sharing all that with us. And hopefully you guys will get to join us soon for another one of these lovely CMA interviews. Thank you.